Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you for still being here and hopefully you will remain here and together we can try and make sense of the world even if we mostly only talk about a small corner of it, namely the British royal family. Now, firstly, before I continue with today's video, I want to make a correction. I see there are stories that WME had ditched Megan. Well, who knows what they will do in the future, but they certainly have not ditched her yet. It is said that she does not appear on their website, which is also not true. You just have to know how and where to look. WME is indeed huge, and WME is a conglomerate. WME is just the umbrella under which various agents and agencies operate. And each agency has its own speciality. One promotes books and authors, another actors and actresses, another music, another extreme sport, and another, like the Harry Walker Agency, promotes public speaking. Yes, the Harry Walker Agency is indeed part of the William Morris Endeavour. And I promise you, as you can see on the screen, WME still very much has Meghan Markle listed as a client for speaking engagements under Harry Walker. As well as, hang in there, as well as promoting her as author with her one and only book, The Bench. <laughs> so no, unfortunately, Megan's year is not starting off with WME dropping her. Quite the opposite. I'm trying my best to keep my finger on the pulse and the person who told me that Meet Me at the Lake is Meghan Markle's project for 2024, says that Meghan is still going for it, still pushing for it, and it is likely that WME and Ari Emanuel will use his influence to get her the team and all the actors she needs. It is his or her, I'm sorry, I can't make out from the pseudonym they put in the email whether it's a him or her, but never mind, it's the opinion that the only thing holding the production back is indeed money. He or she does not know this for a fact. It is only the educated guess, but it appears as if Megan does not have the funds to add to whatever Tyler Perry or whoever else is putting in and nor does Harry. So we'll see. But it appears that it will be the carrot Megan will hold up to Harry Emmanuel. So we'll wait. It is allegedly true that they are not 100% cool with one another because both parties, both Harry Emmanuel and WME and Megan, expected more from the other than they got. So let's see whether they will live up to each other's expectations this year or whether they will part ways. I think that is only my opinion. They will eventually give up on each other, but not yet. While Meghan is still the Duchess of Sussex and still a controversial figure in the limelight, they will still see her as having some sort of money-earning potential. As for Harry, well, here the conversation turns rather serious, but I'm going to leave some of the inside information for a next video while I wait for some specific and very particular information. In the meantime, I have something to say about the headlines which had been popping up like weed after the rain 
and all of them basically saying the same thing. Harry must apologize to his family. Harry misses British life and the friends he had. Blah, blah, bloody blah. Well, why on earth are the newspapers doing this? Rehashing someone's fantasy whenever there's little else to say. Well, I guess investigative journalism is dead <laughs> unless Harry falls flat on his face in public or Megan appears in her gym clothes and farts all the way back to her vehicle. The newspapers will seemingly repeat the same shit over and over and over and over. <laughs> so let's get to the truth for a bit. I'm sure there are certain aspects of British and royal life that Harry misses. Maybe it's his butler or his PA. Maybe it is getting blind drunk at a bar with his mates. Maybe he misses the financial security. Remember, Daddy paid him the same 2.2 million pounds annually, whether he worked 100 days or 10 days in the year. So yes, he would be an idiot not to miss certain aspects of his previous life. That would be sort of normal, I would say. But under no circumstances do I think Harry is pining, yearning, or heartbroken to get back to Britain. How many times has he said he does not like England? He does not want to be a prince, does not want to hang around waiting for the next assignment. And more than anything else, he does not want to share a table with the brother who always gets the extra sausage. <laughs> oh boy, I know I sound like a broken record, but I truly do not know what more Harry has to say or do to convince the media that he wants to grow king on his own shit heap and is not interested in playing second fiddle to his father and brother and he does not want instructions or advice from grey suits. Harry has said these things over and over and over in interviews to his friends in his book. He has been saying it for years, long before Meghan even. So for Auntie Angela Levin, who professes to be a Harry expert, because she spent time with him, I say, rather go write a romance novel next, because you clearly do not understand human nature, you do not understand addiction, and you certainly do not understand mental illness. To even say Harry must both apologise and compromise to get accepted back in the royal family. <laughs> no, my dear, that is just silly. An apology will not, or should not, be enough. And besides, Harry does not just owe his family an apology. He owes the Middletons an apology for defaming their daughter. He owes the British veterans an apology. He owes the entire military an apology. And then he owes England an apology. And finally, when he's done with all of that, he owes the Commonwealth an apology. Yep, when Harry fucks up, he does so properly. <laughs> Even more serious than that, and this is no joke, if Harry lived in any reign before that of Queen Elizabeth II, he would have been charged with treason by now and likely jailed or exiled. Yes, in modern-day Britain, it appears that people do not get charged for treason anymore. But Harry's actions, slandering the most senior royals, including the monarch, 
the queen, the first in line to the throne and his wife, trying to interfere with the line of succession, spreading slanderous and negative propaganda against the country, and so on and so on. I've read the treason laws and criteria for you before. The point is that Harry cannot just go to his father and say, sorry, Pa. Uh -uh. It will require far more than that, far, far more. Pa may hug and welcome his son back. But what about Princess Anne? Will she do it? What about Sophie and Edward? Would they just hug and take him back and forget about everything else? We know William and Catherine will likely not. I mean, it won't just take new water under the bridge. I think it will take a whole new bloody bridge to get William to welcome his brother back. And I do not think Harry has the material or the knowledge to build that bridge. And even if the family can be sorted out, what about the public, the British realm and the Commonwealth public? Are we all to forget the insults and the stinky atmosphere created by Harry and Meghan? No, uh -uh. I adore Angela Levin, but her days as hard-hitting royal reporter are indeed over, in my opinion. Harry needs to find a way to become the man he always dreamed he would be. And I repeat, here in parts of Africa, he is still loved and appreciated. He can start a huge ranger station, conservation area with a research center attached. Come do some good. We people are still prepared to give him a chance. All this nonsense from the likes of Angela Levin and others that the kids can't be schooled here in Africa is just boulder dash. And it shows the ignorance. We have a number of very, very expensive private schools here in South Africa which teaches the British curriculum. Even homeschooling old dragon man, we had a choice. We could choose to teach him according to the South African curriculum or the British curriculum. People are so ignorant and when they make such stupid comments on international television, I get very irritable. I mean, why don't you get on a darn plane, come to South Africa and see what it's all about, see what we have before you go and make a remark like that on television, Miss Levin. Anyway, sometimes I think they are getting paid to talk nonsense. And then they don't even have the decency to check up on their facts. I mean, a few examples. There is, there is St. Mary's in Waverley, Bishop's College in Cape Town, St. Albans in Pretoria, St. Andrew's School for Girls, Kingswood College, and over and above these I've just named, there are approximately 43 other private schools of which I would say a third, you can actually work along with the British curriculum. Anyway, so you know what, if old Harry decides to come to Africa to be himself, here in Africa he can do a lot of things in far more luxury than he has in Montesicchio. Upmarket properties here are fitted with state-of-the-art security. Bodyguards, or what we call VIP security, are very, very well trained. Some even trained overseas. Some are ex-policemen. But whatever they are, they are very well trained. They are also allowed to carry firearms. And best of all, our currency is about 18 rand plus to the dollar and 20 rand plus to the pound. So his security, home and everything else will cost Harry 20 times less than what he is paying currently. 
It is honestly the only way I can see Harry getting himself out of the hole he dug for himself in Montecito. I cannot see Harry getting back in favour with the British people anytime soon and I think it is going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Well, at least for Harry. Okay guys, so that is it for now. I think this year I'm going to stick to shorter videos with one subject per video, even if that means that I post more than one video per day. And then maybe once per month we can have a premiere or a live for an hour. So what do you think of that plan? Okay, think about it and let me know in the comments section. Well, so let me now go hang that washing. And in the meantime, please take good care of yourselves. Bye.